acrylic painting techniques with Mr. G. Who is that guy? All right, going through a lot of stuff today, starting out with what we call a dry brush technique, which means I haven't put any water in my brush at all. I just dipped right into my little blob of paint and I'm just testing it out. And you can notice how um, very solid it is. There's not a lot of striping or any lines um, to the side of it. So this is kind of like the most pure color that you can get. And so we're gonna dry brush all of this we go through it really fast. Just notice how when you overlay the blue onto the red, um, it gets a lot darker. So these are really brilliant colors. And then if you're uh, wanting to change colors, you just wash your brush off really good and then dry it off really good. And this is the dry brush technique. Now I've added a little bit of water on there. And so we're just mixing these colors together and you'll notice that you'll be able to see through them a little bit. They're a little bit more opaque, but they blend really nicely. So just pay attention to the kind of blending that goes on. It's, it's, I remember when I first started with acrylic, how kind of magical it was to see how these colors interacted with each other. So it's a good thing to experiment. Now we're gonna try this pull technique where I've just put some paint down and I'm just kind of pulling it down. We did this with watercolor a little bit last year. So I'm just going to test these out. This is all experimental stuff right now, too. So if you want to test this out, this is kind of part of today's project or assignment is to try some of these techniques and just see how the paint interacts with the brush. It's really important on how you use your brush, too. Notice how I'm kind of doing a nice little wiggle smoothly. I'm not pushing very hard. And then there's this last little technique that I put in there that you might want to try that. There's all sorts of things. I just want you to be able to experiment with these brushes and these colors. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to we're going to attempt to create some rocks, maybe some rocks in water. And we tend to think of rocks as black or gray or but rocks tend to have a lot of different colors in them. So I started out with just a little bit of black and white to make kind of a gray, like a dark, dark gray. But notice, you'll see that there's a little bit of red on there too because I left some red on my brush from before. And so I'm just experimenting with that. The cool thing about rocks is they really can be any color that you want them to be. And so since I'm deciding that these are kind of darker, I'm adding some black and maybe some uh, white to it. The other reason that I want to do this is because I'm, I wanted to make sure that I added some shadow and it's easiest to actually use a little bit of black to create a shadow on one side. And guess where the light is going to be coming from? It's going to be coming from the top right. So in order to create light, I'm going to have to add in some white uh, mixed in with the black. You don't want just straight white. And then we'll add a little bit of highlighting. That's what we would call that. That's where the light is coming from, that top right side. I'm going to add just a tinge of red to this just to see what it looks like. The cool thing about acrylics is you can even let it dry just a little bit and then paint right over it and you can come up with a new color if you don't like it. So I'm going to blend that together just a little bit and then we'll speed this process up a little bit. Do another color. Maybe I'll add some blue this time to it. Maybe a little bit more red. And it's very, very subtle. You can't really see it, but subtlety is really important when we're working with acrylic painting or any painting at all, really. Because reality does have subtleties to it, these little tiny details that we may not pay attention to. Once again, I'm just putting the highlight on the top here with some gray, some white and black together. And then uh, I'm going to top it all off with a little bit more white that I've added. And that's going to give you kind of the impression of more highlights. Now we are going to attempt to do some clouds. Typically with clouds, um, we're going to start out with some white. I always kind of have, have a background, in the, in, in, otherwise it won't look very real. And I'm just pushing my brush down a little bit and then making little circular motions with them. Not all circular at the same time. They're all different. One to the left, one to the right, one kind of round and round. You can kind of see how this goes. And notice that I'm not dipping my paint anymore. I'm letting all the paint run off. So it gets a little bit more see-through, a little bit more opaque. 
And this time I've added just a dab of water to my brush to make it even more see-through, more translucent, as that's what it would be called. Now I'm going to do a little bit of highlighting. I'm going to assume that the sun is coming from the left side this time, the top left. And so when you look at clouds, you'll see these highlights if the sun is out. Pay attention to the next time you see clouds, and you'll see that there's a bit of a highlight. So I want to fill in these clouds just a little bit with uh, probably some light blue. Once again, with acrylics, you can always paint over what you did if you don't like what, uh, what the outcome is. But if you ever take a look at clouds, they're not just white. You'll see all sorts of different colors in there, whether they're whites or uh, whether they're blues or grays. I'm, I'm adding just a little bit of gray into this, a little bit of dark. Because clouds also have shadow. Wherever there's light, there's going to be shadow. So I'm thinking when I look at those clouds, that, that gray right there is a little bit too dark for me. So I'm going to try to tone it down a little bit by adding a little bit more white to it. Once again, that light's coming from the left side. So anything that's dark is going to be on the bottom right. And then I'm adding a few more highlights in here. You just kind of ex got to experiment with clouds and just see how they, they come out. I'm going to add just a little bit of water to this. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to paint something that's not of nature, but something that's created. So let's say you wanted to paint a football helmet or a basketball or something like that. You have to have something to go by. And so right now I'm just going to attempt to paint a vase just kind of out of memory. I'm not looking at anything right now. But if you were, you'd be able to pay attention to more about where the highlights are, what the color kind of looks like. And I'm noticing even after I... I look at this now that that vase is a little bit crooked. It's not perfect. Kind of like us. We're not perfect either. So I'm just filling this in with kind of a, it was a bit of a red and black together. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add just a little bit more um, dark color to it to add the top of the vase because there's going to be a lot of shadow in there. fill in the vase a little bit more with some dark color because I can still see through the vase if you see that you can see the see the blue through it so we want to make sure that that's covered up and beauty again with acrylics is it dries very quickly so you can do layers of acrylics so now we're kind of solidifying it making that vase a little bit more solid but we have to think about light and shadow now so I'm going to mix my a little bit of black in with um, some red and create a bit of a shadow on the bottom right side. That means the light is coming from the top left. So we're going to do a highlight on the top left part too. I'm going to shade the bottom part of this. We'll add a shadow in there later. Now that looks really bright, but if you mix it in well, you can get a nice gradation from the top right to the bottom left. Just a little bit of highlight on the top of this vase right here. Now I'm going to add a little bit of yellow for a brighter highlight. I'm not going to go with white this time. I'm going to go with some yellow and see what do, what the, how that works. And it tends to work out pretty nicely. Add a little bit more shadow and then add the shadow in there. And I'm going to call this done. Now I'm going to just show you some fun techniques you might want to try. I decided to take some masking tape and rip it down the middle. And if you notice the kind of the red and the black and the yellow and the orange square right above it. Oh, I hear my dogs coming in. Hi there. How is it going? <laughs> I'm not going to edit that out. Hi. Maybe you can hear them sniffing. The one above it actually has some masking tape on it too. We'll take off over. We'll take off in just a little bit. But I'm going to put this down. It's kind of it's called a masking technique, and artists use this uh, all the time. Sometimes they use uh, something called uh, it's kind of like masking paint. You put it down, and then you can kind of rub it off after you paint over it. 
So you can see what I did with, uh, with the little area that I pulled the masking tape off of the top one there. These are all techniques that you can kind of just look and see how I've done it. Right now I want to experiment with, probably we'll use toothpicks. If you want to do something like this, I believe that I will have some toothpicks for you. And it's just kind of a neat technique to, to create texture in a painting, especially if you're doing something ab abstract. Um, you can use this technique. to continue with this on with a couple of other different things. I think that we've done this before when we we're doing leaves when we were painting our fall painting color but this is just kind of another technique using different colors and noticing how we can change them. This is just another experimentation that I added to the the one with the masking tape on it. Here's the masking tape one. This doesn't necessarily have to be anything. It really isn't anything. Um, it's very abstract. But sometimes I like to do things like that. And you might too. Sometimes it can be frustrating to try to paint something real. But you still want to paint. And so I like to do things like this often. Just experimenting with colors. So now we've got Q-tips as another form of a brush. And just kind of watch how they interact with how the Q-tip interacts with the paint. You can dab a little bit of paint on one side, a little bit of uh, paint on the other side, and it kind of creates a really cool dynamic between the blue and the white. And I'll try this with all sorts of different colors just so you can see. But this is something that impressionist painters used to do, if they still do. <laughs> To give you maybe possibly the impression of something. I'm not going for anything here. Maybe it's a field of flowers. Something like that. I just really haven't decided. But that's kind of how that turned out. Then we'll rip the masking tape off of here. And we will be done. Uh, you can see that in class. All these different examples. And maybe you can choose to do something like that. Or choose to do something all on your own. This has been Acrylic Painting Techniques with Mr. G. Who is that guy? Thanks for watching.